The rainforest in modern Nigeria, which Benin City was situated, helped in the development of the city because of its vast resources. Fish from rivers and creeks. Animals to hunt. Leaves for roofing. Plants for medicine. Ivory for carving and trading. And wood for boat building. When the Portuguese first discovered the city in 1485, they were stunned to find this vast kingdom made of hundreds of interlocked cities and villages in the middle of the African jungle. They called it the Great City of Benin, at a time when there were hardly any places in Africa the Europeans acknowledged as a city. Indeed, they classified Benin City as one of the most beautiful and best planned cities. In 1691, a Portuguese ship Captain Lorenzo Pinto observed, Great Benin, where the king resides, is larger than Lisbon, all the streets run straight and as far as the eye can see. The houses are large, especially those of the king, which are richly decorated and have fine columns. The city is wealthy and industrious. It is so well governed that theft is unknown, and the people live in such security that they have no doors to their houses. According to the Guinness Book of Records, 1974 edition, they described the walls of Benin City and its surrounding kingdom as the world's largest earthworks carried out prior to the mechanical era. According to estimates by the new scientists Fred Pierce, Benin City's walls were at 1.4 times longer than the Great Wall of China, and consumed a hundred times more material than the Great Pyramid of Cheops. Barely any trace of these walls exists today. The Benin Empire was one of the oldest and most highly developed states in the coastal part of West Africa until it was invaded and destroyed by the British Empire in 1897. The European imperial power of Great Britain ended the empire as a political state in the late 19th century. The Oba Ovenramwan Nagbesai, also called Overami, ruled from 1888 to 1897, until he opposed the colonialists and so they burned his entire city to the ground. The British claim they are justified for their actions. Here is why they claimed Benin City was destroyed. A British delegation departed from the Oil Rivers Protectorate in 1897 with the stated aim of negotiating with the Oba of Benin. I'm sorry, but let's be realistic. We are all aware how the Europeans negotiated with any African village or city at this time, when they didn't get what they wanted, of course this is my opinion, but you are welcome to come to your own. Remember we already know that before this delegation departed the Oba declined the British from moving into the territory. The claims are that the leader of the delegation, James Robert Phillips, asked his superiors in the British Foreign Office for permission to lead an armed British expedition to depose the Oba of Benin for declining Her Majesty's requests, but left for Benin City with a diplomatic delegation instead. Basically this was a scouting mission they are trying to act as if it was a peaceful diplomatic delegation to see if he can change the Oba's mind about the colonialists moving into the territory. We see through their tactics. You already know what they were up to. Again this is my opinion and you are free to research and come to your own. Anyway, the Obus generals and the people of Benin were basically already hip to the Europeans' tactics. By this time, they have been dealing with them for more than four centuries. And they were very aware what the British have done to the surrounding areas of their country. In turn of course, distinguishing this to be an attempt to depose their Oba. The Oba's generals ordered an attack on the delegation as it was approaching Benin City. So on January 12, 1897 what they called a punitive expedition was launched in response by the British. And a 1,200 men strong force, under the command of Sir Harry Rawson, captured Benin City. They deliberately sought out and destroyed certain areas of the city including those thought to belong to the chiefs responsible for the ambush of the British delegation, and in the process a fire burnt the palace and surrounding quarters, which the British claimed was accidental. Historian Max Silen recounts Great Benin's capture in his book, What Britain Did to Nigeria, which examines the legacy of Nigeria's violent colonization in its rapidly expanding modern crisis. He believes historical narratives, largely written by Europeans, were deeply flawed, neglecting a much more interesting and deeper history.
It is very dangerous to rely on the victor's account as the sole account of history, he says. There is a proverb about this, the tale of the hunt will always be the hunter's tale until the lion learns how to tell its story. It's now time for Africa to tell her story. We now have the means and various ways to hear it. Learn more about the true history of Africa. Subscribe for more videos.